looked at bring a trailer in like forever. Really? Yeah. I'm on there all the time. (laughs) Well, you know, part of it for me is that I kind of started making myself sick, like looking at it because I would, uh, you know, find stuff that I couldn't afford. And then I'd be like, Oh, I'm going to like, you know, like, uh, you know, maybe I should buy a, a, Tacoma or maybe I should buy an old land cruiser or whatever. And then when prices started going nuts, I just stopped. Like I just got out of it. Um, all right, let me move my banner up to the top. If I can even do that. All right. I'm not going to screw with it. Who cares? Uh, (laughs) sorry. Streaming is not stressful to me, except like I just came out of this other meeting. So I have to like do a hard switch into stream mode. Right. Yeah. I before this I opened up photo booth to see like what my camera would look like and I was like, oh, okay, and then I like open this and it's like <laughs> zoomed in Yeah, it looks way crappier. Yeah, so I've just been starting it to It looks use... fine. It's just like, oh, that my face is the whole window. I've been uh <laughs> it's okay. You look great. You look Thank great, you. Sweetie. Thank you. I was fishing for that. Thank you. Yeah, sorry it took me so long. Uh hold on. I can't f- Oh, here it is. Bring the trailer. So let me share this screen. Hey, look at us. Yeah. Make ourselves a little bit bigger. All right. Yeah, so I have basically stopped looking at Bring a Trailer because I didn't have, like, it just wasn't making me happy. It wasn't bringing happiness to my life because it was, like, I'm looking at stuff all the time and then starting to go, can I buy that? Do I hate the cars I have? Like, what could I get for my cars? And then it just kind of, like, made me uncomfortable but now that you are like why are you not looking at bring a trailer no no uh, no not no, at no. all no but now i'm realized it's like wait i'm actually not in that headspace anymore and i would like to look at weird old random cars yeah. again i think it's because i got too focused on like what people were selling the rare weird ones and like the the story right. of bring a trailer being like you can have a five thousand dollar car but if you put it on bring a trailer with the right story you can make fifty thousand right. dollars and For now sure. like that doesn't that's not fun to me uh, right. And so like now I now I, I yeah, I can get away from it. So I already see yeah, something I mean, I it's supported the whole marketplace so much. So they Ooh, are this is cool. So bring a trailer for anybody that doesn't know was privately owned was literally like a bring a trailer situation where people were putting up garbage uh, that, you know, like junk cars that had some notoriety or something that people would want to restore. 10 years ago? I don't even know when it started. A long time ago. Um, yeah, a little more than 10 years ago. I mean, it was it was basically before there was the auctions, it was like finding, like sifting through the classifieds and Craigslist and finding like, hey, here's like a 5,000 mile 1993 Camry or, or, or a Lotus Exige that's got, you know, an interesting color or something like that. Like, I guess it maybe wasn't the low mile Camry, but it was, <laughs> it was interesting cars. It was like, Hey, here it was just a blog of like, hey, this is a weird, rare car for sale in in Scranton. You should go check it out. And, right. And then it became the the auctions. But I think it was always, it wasn't always just like project cars and and beaters and stuff that you needed the trailer. I think it was just like, hey, are you prepared to get another car from across the country like now? Because that's where it is, and that's and like this is the only one you're gonna find. Yeah, that's fair. I but it now is owned by Hearst Autos, I believe. So, so right. like car and driver, road and track, whatever the hell else Herstado owns. Spanish American War. Yeah. And, yeah. Yellow, yellow journalism and uh, right. <laughs> an amazing corporate retreat. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, I mean, they, I, I, like they do all their properties, I would imagine they still uh, like let it basically run by itself. But, uh, yeah, it was, yeah. I mean, it was probably a smart buy. Like, uh, Hearst Auto makes most of its money, from my understanding, through, like, not the big, like, you know, road and track and car and driver do fine. It's not like they're, like, not healthy magazines, brands, but it's, like, all the other stuff in the that plugs into that for, like, car shopping. Like, that, I think, right. is where they make most of their money. So, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I, bet, I bet, honestly, like, I bet Bring a Trailer doesn't have, like, a tremendous amount of revenue every year um with their how could it not i mean it's got to have some but i mean if you look at how many cars are for sale and like if if they're making you know a few hundred to five grand on each auction like what is they probably make what like two or three percent per car or something like uh yeah i mean if if the maximum they can make is like 
five grand. I don't know what the percentage is, but, but it's a certain percentage plus the, you know, the listing price. Um, but I mean, it's a lot of cars all the time and I can't imagine the overhead as much. Yeah. There's probably a handful of employees, like, like yeah. 15 or 20 employees at most. Like, I'm not saying it's not a good business. I'm just saying it's not one of those, like, because you do still have to have people submit cars. Like, there's a fair amount of labor to the like vet the car, even though they're basically oh, for just, sure. like, looking at the listing. I'm just saying yeah. it doesn't scale like an advertising business does or whatever, but I'm sure this right. is what people who are like, show me weird cars really care about us as we dissect their business model. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it is such a success story because it's like, it doesn't seem like it takes that much to run this. And it is this site that is like growing and people are glued to it. And it has a tangible way of making money reliably every day yeah. i mean it's one of those things in internet businesses where it's not that the site and what it does is the magic it's the fact that it it's the one that has done it and like yeah. and so like you know doug demiro has cars and bids which we can check out here in a bit uh that is also like the same model it's the exact same model um, yeah. but their margins are probably slimmer, uh, but they're proportionately right. their audience of like, who's going to be there and bid stuff up is also slimmer or smaller. So yeah. like, uh, yeah, you know, there's probably, I always feel like any, anytime you have something like bring a trailer, there's always room in the market for one other, like the, the lower rent version, right? Like, and both, sure. and it ends up helping both. Like it's generally good yeah. to, to do yeah. both, but I don't know if the market can support much more than than that okay here we go right. can you see my screen can you see what i'm looking I at i can see yeah i'm seeing okay. a lot of teal so i wanted this is no joke a geo tracker is very high on my like a, a geo tracker is one of the vehicles that if i find the one i want no matter where what my garage situation is whatever else like i have i <laughs> Maybe not the financial budget, but I have the emotional budget for like sure. jumping on the right one. I want yeah. a pink. I want a pink one. I want a pink Ooh, convertible. Yeah. So no Geo samurai tracker. will not do. It has to be a tracker. I I want that. They didn't. I don't want to buy a samurai and paint it pink. I want right, right. A, oh yeah, yeah. I got you. I got and you. And like I want the graphics. Like and I'll probably like redo the graphics and you know clean it up. But like I want a convertible geo tracker in pink with the you know fruit punch graphics on oh, the it's side. great it's but great. this is we were just we were nice. just like a, i was oblivious to this having the coolest box flares for 25 years and now it's like oh that is those yeah. are it's like an e30 it's they've got an e30 m3 i yeah as a piece of industrial design i do actually think they're really well designed totally. uh totally. it's just that they're tiny and so it doesn't telegraph the way it did you know the other thing that i think is so funny about the history of these is that I don't know that I was paying that much attention to these when these when these came out, but I mean they were definitely launched as like there was a whole segment of cars in the '90s that were basically girls' cars, including the Miata. Like I'm 43, so like I remember when the Miata came out, and all the car reviewers were like, "Wow, this thing is great," but all mm -hmm. the normies of the world were like, "That's for you know women," um, and you know, the modern Miata thing where it's like car enthusiasm has finally grown up and embraced it. But the, right. the, the tracker was a very similar thing, even more so in a way because it was a four by four. And so in theory, it's like an adventure vehicle, even though that category didn't really exist per se. Um, yeah. But I knew very few in the country where I grew up, I knew very few people who would even consider these then ironically what has happened and why these are fairly rare on the ground now, besides them being basically total pieces of shit and not holding up is <laughs> that uh, a ton of these got turned into like mud and, and right. like, cheap off-roaders. So it's right. hard to find like one that's in this good a condition. Uh, yeah. This is at 1750. looks like it just hit. Just that. hit. Yeah. It's in P it, it's in Pittsburgh. It's not far from me. This is yeah. This is so nice. seven days left, so it just went on the site. Yeah. What would you guess? I love playing the like. Can you bet the odds mm. on bring a trailer? What do you think this will go for? Oh my god! I literally have no frame of reference. I'm going to say like fifty five hundred. That seems that seems about right to me. I feel like there's a threshold on these things where it's right. still somewhere around like 
I, not on not on Gia or on trackers specifically. I just mean on like random ass cars where it's like almost everything at this point will like I feel like the number used to be like three thousand dollars two years ago, and now that number is like five thousand dollars. But there's always going to be somebody in the world who will buy anything for five thousand dollars. Yeah, we're gonna like keep bring, finding that person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, which is what well, this is. This is a car that, like I said, I didn't notice the box players until like very recently. This is a car like the first gen Rav Four, where it never even registered to me as cool until right. like the last two or three years. And I'm not. I'm not saying I'm ahead of the curve, but ahead of a lot of the like you know boomers and stuff like prowling the site i'm probably you know you know what i mean there's probably a lot of people who just still look past this and are like that's not cool yeah. so there is a definite ceiling to like no one's gonna pay you know 11 grand for this probably but maybe i'm way off that's just my speculation I mean, the only reason i think it'll go above your estimate is because having done a little light shopping for these there's not many good not rusted out examples yeah those so wheels like, are so mopar I love it. They like the Do they look like the Dodge Stealth wheels. It's it like yeah, just the curved edge. And I mean, uh, they're very flattering in my opinion because you have like hard edge, hard edge, hard totally. edge, and then you have like a little bit of a rounded thing. Uh, it's funny you mentioned the first gen Rav Four because that's the other thing that is like that I would jump on in this space, which yeah. is the two door, um, mm -hmm. the two door convertible or target top or whatever they called it. Rav4, yeah. um, ideally with the like really HKSE like uh printed yes. seats, like oh, are yeah. very good. Uh, yeah. I will I'm not even logged into this, but I will keep an eye on that because yeah, I you know, could I get it? Could I strip it? Could I repaint it the pink? Would it if I really passionately wanted it? <laughs> like, yeah, but I'm still in a headspace where I'm like, I want to find I want to find the tracker that was like pulled behind an RV for 50,000 miles and then thrown in a garage mm -hmm. somewhere. Like, I, I still feel like if I were guessing, I bet there's like 10 of them locked up in the U S somewhere that are exactly what I want. But if they ever make it onto an auction site or a listing site where I could find it, like who, who knows, uh, old Volvos, Honestly, I don't care that much. Ironically, it, they just Volvo never owner. they just never click for me. Like I know that people are into them, but like I'm like, mm, yeah, that's the Volvo. Like they, I just have no appreciation for them. <laughs> yeah. It's like that's what that is. Just, just not on my radar. But yeah. I mean, more power to the people who like them. I'm just, you know, we're we're snobby types. You know what we like. Yeah, I mean, I, I would <laughs> I would own uh, in, in the future, which I am working on, where I have a barn and I can throw crappy things I don't care that much in disrepair into. Like, would I buy a 240 wagon at some point? Yes. Would I immediately, like, beef it out as a stupid off-roader adventure, like a gambler-style build? Like, yes, I would also, you know, yeah. it's like, but I yeah. don't I don't cherish the old Volvo. I didn't, I wasn't a big Volvo guy until I bought the V90. And then, That's like, right, you have the V90. The V90 I, just I watched... adore, but it's like, it doesn't make it's the totally old different. older ones. Yeah. Yeah. I just watched uh, Beetlejuice, which has, they... They crash their old Volvo wagon off a bridge in the very a, beginning. There is Spoiler some, for the first five minutes of the movie. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spoil a great Twitter account idea I had that would have literally dozens of followers, which is <laughs> Volvo, the car of horror. So something I have noticed is that I would say, I mean, I'm pulling a number out of my ass, but 50% of the time, if you watch a horror movie, there's a Volvo. If there's a car in it, there's a, it's a Volvo. Wow. Like, Volvo, because Volvo reads as like safe. person safe, yeah, safety, and then the right. person's gonna get murdered, and then it also reads as like this is just an average person who like is doing whatever. Oh yeah, but I, I and I didn't, I never wrote down a list. I really should do it, but it's like I, no joke, I've seen Volvos in horror movies twenty times easily, and I'm not like a big horror movie guy, um, but yeah, that's that is a thing. This Ooh, is cool. That was cool. That's oh, really cool. The green. The green is fantastic. Green velvet yeah. metallic. 27 Ooh. grand already. Yeah. I don't know classics, American iron classics uh, that well. I don't know. Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. It's like uh, the color of that, the color of the tracker outside is on the inside <laughs> yeah. of this Continental. I mean, oh, this is the man. suicide door when this is like the classic. The convertible yeah. makes it cooler to me. I don't know if it makes it. Uh, better, but these are such like an outliner of classic American cars because it's just like you know yeah. not muscle; it's just you know elegance. 
yeah, just a just a, a boulevard cruiser. Like these are the uh, when I lived in Detroit, it all clicked for me uh, why yeah. these cars got built in Detroit in the '60s and '70s is like, uh, and I'm not the first one to say this. Somebody, in fact, probably said it to me, but it's like if the only way you drive is to like drive down the terrible streets of Detroit to your like office job at General Motors, Ford, or or Chrysler, like this is the perfect solution for you. <laughs> like, even though the rest of America really didn't necessarily need this, like this is an auto executive's perfect car, but I, th yeah, <laughs> this is amazing. Like this yeah. is too nice. I would never, I'd probably never own a American classic car. It's just not, you know, I'm not the right generation, but like I would happily roll around in this. This is such a pretty thing. Yeah. I feel like maybe there's still some like weird, deals on some like i don't know if it's like buick wildcat or like rivieras yeah. where it's like they're not like they're just kind of like not the cool ones they're not the fast yeah. ones they're, they're not the super classy so it's just like there maybe there's still one that's you know sub 20 20k or something there, like that so when we lived in detroit uh one thing that we recognize and you see this when you do the woodward dream cruise everybody brings mm -hmm. out their cars and so many people like this was a this was in a, a you know mid twentieth century thing in general, but you, you see it encapsulated in in Detroit, where it's like everybody's got one sick car in the garage, and they probably bought it like 30, 40 years ago. Yeah, and in Detroit, they're worth buckets, like because everybody has them, right? And so <laughs> like we almost bought um, Crystal and I almost bought or you know casually looked at I guess. Um, a couple of uh, C3 Corvettes Ooh, because yeah. we, you know, it's one of my favorite. It's like they're terrible cars, but they're beautiful and they're totally cheap ish totally. yeah. and cheap to maintain and operate. And Crystal loves them, which like, I'm like, hell yeah, like get, you know, get something fun. And we were finding all sorts of C3s in Detroit for like 10 grand, like in perfect yeah. running condition. Like, you know, the, like if, they're fine because the there's just so many. If it was, if they didn't make, you know, tens and tens of thousands or whatever, and if it was like made from a European company, but with that design, it would be like in the MoMA. I think yes. it's just a really fantastic design. Like it's unloved because a lot of them you see are bad and the later ones are bad and stuff, but it's- Well, and the later, they built so it for so long, they like cool. screwed up the, they just, they 70s up a really beautiful 60s design. Yeah. Um, but I, I agree with you hundred percent. I think it's still one of the most beautiful things ever made and not- just because like i think if you could get out of your head and look at a what's the toyota that has uh the 2000 gt like yeah. which so many people are like oh it's you know so beautiful and you have like a ferrari and a 2000 gt and uh like but i honestly think like the early c3s as a thing as an aesthetic thing like they fight at that level yeah like, i just yeah. think they got the and in some ways are more beautiful to me because the proportion, the length of the stingray, like, yeah, carries the haunches a little right. better. Right. Yeah. Right. I, I love like the peaky fenders. It's not just a swoopy fender, but it's got that like crease on the top. They're it's fantastic. Really cool. And I mean, can I just say, I hate this land, this uh, <laughs> defender. I hate this. What? Come on, it's man. just, it's so, it's just like they threw a catalog at it. Yeah, no, this is a, like a Joe Rogan listening, like listener. There are more, like, there are more and more. They're all like this. I saw one over the weekend with like flay, like wide bodied, you know, like it was like bolt on wide body flares and it, it you know, wider than this. Like it was very I, bad. Yeah. I have no, I have no, I'm like, uh, defenders to never, ever called to me. Because like they're crap. Like they're crap. It's objectively a bad vehicle. Like it's objectively yeah. bad. And I think they're. I think they're like. I would conversely go pretty hard to say it's probably the best looking four by four truck that's ever been made. Like just as a mm -hmm. piece of ID, it's like it's just it's square and it's nice and the lights do great work and like. They look dope, but like, yeah. I mean, I, I I think it was John Ward said on YouTube, uh, the guy that restores all the Land Cruisers, the icon guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, I just saw Sarah said Volvo's the choice for murder victims, and that's exactly that's that is my theory. <laughs> um, yeah, but he they did uh, Icon did one Defender, and he's like the parts 
like the parts on the left side don't have the same dimensions as the parts on the right side. Like he's like, you know, we restore down to the bolt and we would take OEM parts and they would not go back together right if we made the angles 90 degrees because wow. like they weren't manufactured the the di like proportionately. <laughs> um, no, I would, the one that I appeals to me a little bit and I still think they're, you know, it's 80s uh, British engineering, but like, I do think a Range Rover Classic is a nice oh, looking yeah. vehicle. Yeah. Like well, the two doors are now they're like unobtainium, but the two yeah. doors are super cool. There was one of those in uh, Loki, actually, like that they, they oh. used in like in this alternate dimension or whatever. There was a, a Range Rover Classic, and I was like, "That's a good choice." I think Torchinsky yeah. actually wrote something about it too. It was like, That's "Yeah, cool. this is like a this is the right thing for a British lead." Yeah, like weirdness. I don't care about three five sixes. Great, like. Uh, I would I would I would drive a three five six kit car, like mm -hmm. way I would or I would prefer owning a three five six kit car way more than I would ever prefer. Not that these are in my budget anyway, but I don't know. I think they're I, I think they're cool. I I do get that it's like it's almost it's almost too slow to really. I I don't know. I've I've driven a couple, and it's not that you still have just as much fun, but it's it's less usable than a ten years newer Porsche because of. Right the performance level. Um, and then if I lived in California, I would have one all day long, but here without, you know, in, in most of America without having AC, without having, you know, I, I don't know, it, it doesn't, yeah. not as cool to me as like, you know, a later 911. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I mean, as an object, they're beautiful. I would love to, I would love to have one just to like photograph all the time. I don't think they're that beautiful. Like I think, I think the I, coupes are really, really nice. I like I, this one. I like the I like the cabs. I don't even they call them cabs back there. I like the convertible better than the coupes. And the reason mm -hmm. that that bugs me, yeah, I really did not mean to make this pun, is that the 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 greenhouse looks to me like a beetle like oh. floating into the lines of what I consider Porsche lines. And like, <laughs> I've never seen that. And now I do. Yeah. And so it's like, I, it's not that I, you know, the, the connection between a, the nine eleven and the beetle and whatever, like that's fine. It doesn't bother me in the least, but like, it's literally the way the metal is hammered in this. It just, it just doesn't, I want this to be, I want this to be a little more integrated and like maybe even cut, back down a little bit but anyway like they're fine i'll never ever own one uh and, and i do think you're absolutely right it's like if you're going to buy one today you need to live in like marin county or like in the hills above la and go yeah. bop around at 45 miles an hour on some back roads twisties and just have that like always good weather experience, but and that uh, sounds like a blast, but yeah, that's I, not my reality. <laughs> I'm open to anyone else volunteering to like, let me do that with theirs, but yes. I don't want it. Did right, you I'll, see that R34 skyline? Like I'm not even big into those, but the purple and the just the fact good. that it's here on in California or no, it's in New York is super cool. Yeah. I don't, I've never gotten the skyline bug even as a Gran Turismo kid. Um, but uh, I, I just think this generation is not my favorite because like everyone, everyone is like, oh, like everyone gravitates towards it as like the ultimate, you know, the ultimate of the of the old skylines, yeah. and it, like I think it's not as cool. But um, I what the I purple do is pretty hard to ignore. The purple's great. I mean, I, I there's a guy in my garage here that has a purple Panamera, um, and he told me, uh, and he's a he's not an orthodontist, he's an optometrist, uh, but he was like, I got a killer deal on it because nobody wanted the purple one. And I was oh. like, I'm like, dude, you nailed it. Like, because Panameras are not, I mean, they're great cars or whatever, but they're not cool. I'm like, but a purple Panamera, it's kind of cool. Yeah. Like, I, I can I was, that. I was just talking, this is tangentially related to Bring a Trailer. I was I was shooting a car over the weekend for, um, that will be on Bring a Trailer. And the owner, uh, somehow we're chatting and he, he likes you know, I guess his son, his son likes the sport Turismo, you know, the wagon. And I yeah. was like, now that I was like, that's a car that will be huge dollar, you know, in 10 years, that's going to yeah. be huge dollars on bring a trailer because no one buys them now. Like all the people that want them now yeah. are not can't afford them, can't afford them 
or and so in like you know that's got a car that will it, you will see the price you know yeah. the regular Panamera will be here the the Sport Turismo will be up there I think because there's just so few no one's buying them but I found you know. I, a guy passed me uh, when I was in San Francisco a guy drove by me in a white one in whatever I mean I. I I didn't look, but I mean, it was probably like a four, you know, maybe a four S or what. It wasn't like a top end one. It was clearly sure. like more on the base side, but I like gave him like a big thumbs up and was like, yeah, nice. And I, and I totally reading into it, but I got, I saw the, his face and I felt like he doesn't get that as much as he had hoped he would get that. It was that <laughs> look like where he was like, thank you. Somebody thinks my like Porsche station oh, cool. wagon is cool, but I'm like, that's oh, cool. yeah, like I, I, yeah, I would, I would roll with that all day long. Yeah. This is fantastic. A 510 is now out of my budget, but I, I mean, for like realistic, like a, a right for what fun, you would for think what is I want, reasonable. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But having owned a 2002, I feel like you have like 510, 2002 and the alpha. Uh, I, I don't know my alpha as well, like but that one, like that GTV there. Yeah. Like a GT, like those are, I think I wrote about this somewhere. Maybe it was just literally on Twitter uh, where it's like, they're the same car. It's just, if mm -hmm. you move the slider from angles to curves. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like the 2002 is in the middle and then like the, the GTV is on the end, but um, yeah, they're cool. But ma the main thing, honestly, I like about this is the, the paint. Like the I like the stripes. Super cool. I don't really need all of this business. <laughs> I think yeah. that the my, my friends, this is like putting racks on stuff has got to be ending <laughs> just to imply <laughs> rallyness. Like it's got to be ending pretty soon. Yeah. Who's using these racks? You put the racks but, on so you can put the lights on so people know you have racks. Like I don't want to, I don't want to violate the disclosure, but uh, my friend's uh, Panda is closing today in a couple oh, hours. Let's look at it. All right. All right. Let me go search. I don't know where you. I don't know where you find. Actually, it might be in the. No, I don't know. Never mind. <laughs> I don't know what you're gonna say, but oh, oh there it is. is. Yeah, ninety five hundred bucks. All right. Yeah, I think that's pretty good. I don't know. Right. I don't know what he paid for it, but I mean, he bought it from Italy and shipped it here. Um, and ooh. Uh, ooh, yeah, good shape. Man, that interior is fantastic. It's great. So someone told me I posted the something. Did on you take these pictures? This. I took most of them. Yeah, there's some not as good ones that are there that are throughout. Like this, <laughs> this one's not as good. So the interior. If you go back to the interior, I was told by someone that it was designed so that you could like move the steering wheel and have it on the right side. Like you could switch this to right hand drive in like 30 minutes. Oh, just with parts, I don't, like just like, because it's like it's just designed that way to huh. be super universal. I mean that that there's no glove box; it's just that like cavity there. And so right. I think if you take out that plastic steering wheel surround and everything, it would it would just slide over. I want to see the like gauge cluster more. I don't know if there's a picture of it. Uh, there's a lot of pictures, so there's got to be one. But it's all it's all in no order. At the oh, bottom, here there's mud pictures that we took of it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh man, this is very good. Is that cork or is that just like wood or fake wood? I think it might be cork. I don't even know if there's a close and this picture. This is corduroy. Of it. Uh, it's like a canvasy, or like stuff. a denim canvas. Yeah, it's like thing. canvasy. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't take this picture. It's uh, not my picture. I know very. This this is the best picture there is. So clearly, <laughs> uh, clearly yeah, you didn't come around it. to it. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't like, I know very like Panda. I only know from Top Gear, Clark or uh, James May, yeah. you know, jokes or whatever, but like uh, aesthetically very into this. He's got the inclinometer. That's factory. Uh, That's part of the Panda four by four. This, the four by four, the four wheel drive system was made by Steyr Puke. I'm not pronouncing that right, but it's the yeah, factory that makes the G Wagon in Austria. Okay. They, Produce. They developed and produced the the four wheel drive system, the whole drivetrain for this car. So the the four x four was like a serious off roader. Uh, I think. I mean, my bias is showing because I like, you know, eighties and nineties uh, plastic design. Yeah. Like, I mean, yeah. I just I like this stuff. It's always like I, Pontiacs are very appealing to me because I just like like look we we had injection molding and we weren't afraid to use it. Like here it is. <laughs> we pushed it to the limit. Yeah. 
But uh, what I really like about this is the purposeful design, like everything's, you know, like round rec, like it, it reads as like off-road utility vehicle, but with the color palette and the fabric work, like I would lo love to see more of this coming back. Like, yeah, uh, I get yeah. that like people want to be able to hose things out in theory, although most vehicles that say you can do that, you can't, can't do that. Uh, right. But like, why shouldn't the inside of your, why shouldn't like this shape like a nice square exposed screws and rivets. Why shouldn't this be sitting next to a teal canvas? <laughs> like it looks totally. great. Like it's a totally a good, a good look. I think it somebody's is. gonna make, uh, I think somebody's gonna be real. I think somebody's yeah. about to make this a good was a decision. Late, this, so the, the Panda 4x4 came out in like 83, I think. And so this was a 93. So they had like 10 years to kind of keep refining with it and, and, you know, have more fun with the colors and additions. So this is the country club edition, which I don't know what that means, but I like cool. the, the typeface. Teal. Yeah. Like this is, yeah, this is nice too. This is a comeback around too. Cause like, I don't know if you've noticed this as design nerd stuff, but like, uh, I don't even know how you, I don't know typefaces well enough to say it, but it's like these thin, uh, like serifed fonts yeah. that I always think of as like Times New Romany kind of fonts right. are now yeah. like an indicator of cool again. Like yeah, yeah, like the like kind of like Chobani packaging, like the uh, yogurt. Uh -huh. That's a super specific example, but that's what I think of as like kind of like so contemporary that's actually, serif. Yeah, I mean Chobani. Uh, <laughs> this is I, I don't even know if anybody's watching this stream, so we're doing this for us. Uh, but like. Uh, <laughs> Like that Chobani design uh, was actually super influential in the, de in the design world um, yeah. because it uh, because they went to market with a serif typeface and then the packaging and everything was backed out into uh, that like taupe kind of color. Um, yeah, and yeah. They won a bunch of awards for that, and uh, the student one of the studios that worked on that ended up doing the Twitch redesign, which is like half the only reason that I know about this, but a really good branding studio. Um, but yeah, I think they were completely ahead of the curve. And so it's funny to me now to see these uh, uh, 80s and 90s, like I bet in 93, this was not quite reading cool anymore, like it did in the 80s. Uh, yeah. But like now it, it reads totally cool to me. Also, well, I mean, Sarah, it's, I it's missed such a thing, but... The use case for switching the steering wheel side to side, it's like when Kevin say it's like it's it's possible to do it quickly, it's still like it's not a user switch. It's like you still have to like a mechanic has to switch it over. But the reason they would build it yeah. that way is because they can go into either left hand drive or right hand drive markets without without having to totally re-engineer the whole car. Um, exactly. and like uh yeah, it's just a cost saving measure. Um, yeah, no, I think the thing about the typeface back to bring a typeface, um, I think, <laughs> I think the, uh, the serifs coming back or has been back be is like a rejection to that 2000 to 2010, like web 2.0 or even 2000 to 2015, like all the like geometric yeah, rebranding, like, Hey, we, you know, we're a giant company. We've got a new logo and it looks like all the others and Spotify and Google. And, you yeah. know, it's like. Yahoo, like everyone went to the same three like geometric typefaces. Well, everybody, so, so this is something that is a bugbear of mine um, as a design fan is like you, so so all of that stuff that happened in the 2000s, I guess is probably when it started, but a lot of that Helvetica like based or return to Helvetica. And do you so, remember the gap redesign? <laughs> Yeah, the aborted dude. one. <laughs> uh, like, where? What drives me nuts about some of that stuff? Because, like, that was uh, I, like I would bucket that all in, under like Paul Rand style thinking, right? Like, let's have a really clean corporate logo type, and then like a very clean, um, you know, maybe two or three color, but works in duo tone like logo. And yeah. in reaction to a lot of the garbage that was being spit out previous to that with a lot of like rendered chrome looking like right. dimensional shapes, like it was better, 
But what everybody did is they just like all built the same thing. The design systems were like all exactly the same pulling from uh, like, really, I think Paul Rand was like the buy and like far who did like uh, uh, IBM and sure, yeah. uh, American Airlines. And I can't remember, but a lot of like the Enron. early 60s. Enron and, was his did, last did, logo. Did I, Enron, I forgot about that. Um, and it's like in reaction to that crap stuff, sure, fine. But what also drives me crazy, and it's the same thing that happens with like mid-century modern houses and furniture or whatever. It's like they they pull this one little stripe of it out and then reinterpret it as a full system in the future, missing the context of how that stuff worked within the culture of the 60s or 50s or wherever right. they're pulling from. And yeah. the best example of this is if you look at um if you look at Ray and Charles Eames house like where they actually lived, like the, you know, the mother the Eames house. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've been to it. I've been to yeah. it. Oh, that's not, but so when you go in, I've only ever seen pictures and never been there, but when you, you go in, it's go like, in. well, I can, because um, <laughs> they would let me, because I know so much. Um, yeah. <laughs> but like when you see, when you see it, it's like, it's full of texture, it's full of color. It's full of like woven that, you know, it's like they, it was lived in and it's still beautiful and designed and like, and laid out, but it's like that, I feel like post computer, post internet design often is like removing things from the environment and that where the influences came from. And it's yeah. like, they don't work the same when you make everything surrounding it have the same thing, which actually not to like, I mean, cause again, who cares? This is our stream. We can talk about whatever the hell we want to talk about, but it's one of the things that also drives me a little crazy about uh, car design and then how people appreciate the older designs, which is like, like, does it work in the built environment today? Right. And like, a, there's a big difference to me. I mean, this is like my 356 complaint. It's like the 356, I think to me is a design that doesn't work that well on its own, but psychically it's hard to look at one without getting the entire like Porsche brand mythos oh, and impossible. whatever yeah. like around there and sure. so yeah i mean there's no right or wrong in it to be clear but hey look at this so he's already doing your friend i mean these are somewhat older although this is they're pretty old yeah this, see, these things just don't pop up because it doesn't make sense to import one yeah to spend the money to import one because it, you pay you know a lot of money out of the out of the gate so this is very nice too the red ooh, with yeah. the blue top Oh, it's another country oh, club. Oh, and plaid. Red. Okay, these are cool. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. Two-tone steering wheel. Did you drive it, like, when you were out taking pictures and stuff? How does it Yeah, handle? yeah, so like, I kept it for, like, a weekend. Oh, Like, wow. I, I, I had, I've driven it a few times, and it's it's fun. It's, like, it's the, I'm going to write up a thing about it, about the whole process, but it's, like, the Fiat, it's, like, one of the best put-together old Fiats. You know, it really, it just, it something about it it's a really charming collection of flaws like objectively it's bad but it is <laughs> right. uh but it is like wonderful in the ways that it's it's wonderful and it's it's fun that's cool i may like if we do this again i may just have like a like a rule that we just don't look at 911s because it's like 911 oh, good with that 911 the most boring car to look at if you're not deeply into 911s like yep that's I another 911 like oh, oh look, look at the trim on that one look the color is cool they actually oh, did the it's got the wrong thing. trim around the headlights yeah uh, the rings uh not the best sl there ever was but, but it's cool that it borrows so much from like the 300 like it is like you get like the gullwing fascia and some uh -huh. of the engine stuff and the it reminds me of uh, it's like the lexus line now right where you have uh oh, the lc is like getting a baby lfa yeah yeah it's like they they and uh and and then what lotus just did that with the amira or mira yeah. or saying that where it's yeah. like it literally just looks like i actually think it, it's been weird i've seen a few people criticize the amira's looks and when they put it next to the Evia, the $2 million hypercar right. thing that I don't think is even out yet either, I actually think uh, the the $80,000 car looks more complete than the yeah. the supercar would. Like the stuff they stole from it uh, is like, it's like, it's like the brush strokes are bigger to make them show up on the smaller chassis and it works. It works for me. I I think I agree, and also because I have so much baggage, like 
the idea of a two of two million dollar like you know quote unquote hypercar is right. not as appealing to me, and that's baggage that's with me. Where it's like the Amira is like, oh, this looks cool, and it could actually like get up a driveway. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that seems more appealing. I like they are hypercars. Just basically don't register for me. Like, yeah, I don't. I mean, a lot of people have said this about Ferrari because they just launched two cars, three cars. I don't even know, but it's like when I see like a thing come across my browser, that's like new Ferrari. I'm like, like, it doesn't even register in my brain. Like I'll look at it and I'll be like, Oh, that's neat, I guess. And then, mm -hmm. and then it just like goes away because I'll never own one. I, it wasn't built for me. It was built for, you know, 400 billionaires on the planet who are going to buy it and throw it in a garage. And then the performance stuff at this point is like, cool. Like I know I don't track things. I'm not like, you know, it's just like, but it's so yeah. funny to me how much energy gets thrown into hypercar stuff that I just I don't lust after them. I don't I don't like put them on my wall. Like I'm just like, yeah, uh, I don't care. Like it's not yeah. it's like a whole different product category to me. The first the first batch, like the LaFerrari, the 918, the P1 were yeah. exciting because it's like they did all this technology. They got this performance at this insane level and they, they, and they all came out at the same time. It was exciting. Right. And then that after that, it's like, those just busted open the door for now you can charge $2 million for a car. No one's ever heard of. Yeah. And it's like nothing that's come out since is, is interesting or appealing because of just because it's expensive. I, yeah. It just, and like, I would still like, I'd love a 918. Like 918s are cool. Like they're very pretty. Like they, they meet a lot. There's of one on my shelf back there. <laughs> I did get the, there was a small dealer, like a, like a largely Porsche dealer, but just like a guy, a guy who started an exotics uh, dealership in, in uh, Birmingham, uh, North of Detroit. And uh, he had a 918 that he was selling on consignment for somebody once that I got to go sit in at least and like, go check it out. And it definitely like it, because it's a little more restrained, I think, than yeah. some things like it still feels really it felt cool. It yeah. felt pretty to me where I was like, this is just a nice, pretty yeah. thing. Um, but yeah, after, after that, and that shootout moment, I remember Chris Harris had like a really big video where he drove all three and that like, was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like that moment was, made me, it was fun then made me excited about, but how long ago is that now? Like eight years ago, seven years ago? Yeah. Like, something like that. Well, I'm bursting at the seams to say I've driven a 918. So. Oh, have you really? In what yeah. context? Like on a track? Um, we, like down the one, like we went to from basically me and Chris Perkins and a guy from Porsche uh, drove down that a Panamera and, and my old 911 um, from Monterey to LA over like two days. And we did a story about basically about the, the story now. Yeah. Yeah. The Panamera hybrid kind of, you know, about the 918 leading to the Panamera hybrid. And so this was like 2018. So this was like five years. Like the 918 was a five year old car and yeah. we drove Porsches. And I mean, we drove on like some amazing roads in, in, you know, like inside the one, you know, yeah. you go inland and it's like crazy. Yeah, you cut up into it's it. Amazing. Yeah, I've done that. Yeah. That's amazing cool. stuff. That so is it, cool. was, it was, it was, it was, that is you worth know, bragging about amazing. Don't feel, yeah. don't feel shy. Like, <laughs> I mean, and that's, that to me is driving. And I mean, I, I have no, like, I don't care about track stuff. Uh, Cause I'm cheap mainly. Like if I, mm -hmm. if I had tons of money, I might get into it, but like, uh for me driving is like a very i very rarely do group drives like uh, driving for me is like the burning miles interspersed with interspersed is that even a word uh with uh some twisties right and like that's why the one in all of those runs are so great is it's like cool i'm seeing really pretty stuff i'm enjoying the car hey the roads opened up and i can now like go hard for a, a little bit yeah and like I would love to do, you know, I've never been a car journalist. Like I've reviewed a few cars or whatever, but I never worked in the industry per se. And like, so I had never really gotten access to the really fancy stuff too much, but that's exactly what I would want it for. Like, I don't care about taking it around road America or, you know, wherever, right. like on a, on a thing. Like I've been on test drives uh, for pretty, <laughs> Jalopnik once sent me on a test drive for, I think it was the new Camaro SS. I don't remember. Some Camaro. Okay. And like went out to whatever that track is out by Vegas and mm. like was was like the basically the only non-auto rider on the drive program. And it was cool. Like, and I really enjoyed 
the experience and I wrote an okay, like I didn't, the piece I wrote was just whatever. It wasn't good. Um, but like, I, I, it didn't cause me to be like, man, I can't wait to drive a better car on this same track so I can figure out how to get two seconds faster. You know, it was just like, yeah, I, I don't know. So I think to a certain extent, this is, this is part of a philosophical thing for me, but there are certain experiences that I don't allow myself to have because I don't want to ruin the attainable experiences that are available to me. And like, that's what hypercars feel like to me. It's like, do I work my whole life to save up so I can buy this thing that is too fast to drive on the road? Or do I just really enjoy having relatively slow cars that I can push, you know, to yeah. eight tenths of their ability on the road? But you know, if yeah. I hit the lottery, check back. Sure. <laughs> I'll be like, give me all the stuff. There's a Buick Wildcat. Yeah, speak of the devil. Mentioning that. How much is this going for? I have uh, 12 I guess grand. it just went up. Oh, seven days left. Yeah. But that's a, you know, that's a lot of fun. That's got a lot of character. Yeah, I love that color. Repainted. Ooh, new paint. Yeah, which is fine. Yeah, uh, well, we could keep going, but I'm about out of time, and I've kept okay. you quite a bit as well. But, like, I like... Uh, Basically, what I'm trying to figure out right now, I, and and, I, and it seems to, it seems to be right, like uh, is like w there's a few sites out on the web that are technically shopping sites that are like fun just to browse, and like we all do it with like Twitter and social media and all that stuff as well. But I'm also like, this is if you bring in smart, experienced, fun people to like browse those with you, like um, so. Anyway, what I'm saying is, you're welcome anytime uh, okay. to, to yeah. come do this. Like this is super fun, and I like I also. Like in oh, learning that green box there. Uh, yeah, that. I know, I know. I have we have to look at this before you go. Sixty <laughs> grand. This isn't the green that I love. I of this generation. I love the the seafoam one. Um, ocean green. Oh yeah, metallic. yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. What's it called? Ocean green metallic. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like the nine nine six like launch color. Oh, like wait, one of the sorry, launch it opened colors. up in a new browser. This is the other thing that sucks. It's like <laughs> I had. Like, so if I if I sent you if I put a link in the chat, would you be able to open it? Yeah, let me see. Well, I don't have a link, but uh, oh, okay. Well, so I can look here. I'll I just show you. in case, like, if we if we searched for if we each had like three cars to look at, like pre loaded. Yeah. Oh, I like the randomness too. Yeah, I think uh, both. Here. I think both both can work. So this is this. Oh, I can't actually post in the chat. That's for other people. Oh yeah, you probably have to be like in the Twitch chat itself. Oh okay. Um, I don't Yeah. I don't think this platform has like a private, uh, stream, like a private chat. Oh yeah. That's the good color. That's so but, cool. Uh, I just never see that. I have a story that I have been, I might write it for pretzel. I, I, I don't know, but I have a story that I have been sitting on. I mean, it's just a personal, it's just like an, an anecdote, but like I, no joke, uh, I like one of the most traumatic and impactful moments of my life was buying an ocean Jade metallic nine 11. And I had like put down a deposit was supposed to get on a plane at like 6 AM the next morning. And the stress about whether this was a good decision for me in my life at that point, like, and then obviously was, or not obviously, but I had like a ton of other stress in my life. Like I had the only time I can say in my life I've ever had a nervous breakdown was like getting ready to fly to Florida to buy this like 996 wow. in this color. And like what I learned, so it's like a car story, but it's just like all the bullshit I write, which is just like, let me tell you about me more. I hope you find this. Yeah. Interesting. <laughs> um, no, it's life. That's, good. It's That's like, better to read about. Anyone yeah. can write about a car. And so I want to write that story at some point of just like, because the thing for me, like just to spoil the story is like, I never, 9-11s never were on my radar in the least ever until I turned 40. And then it was like, it was like this cosmic joke where one day I woke up and actually now that I say it, this is like part of why I stopped browsing Bring a Trailer because it was during a period of time where I was browsing Bring a Trailer like every day and something just like, hit in my head where I was like, I have to have a 911. Like the 911 will be my next wow. car. This is like my goal. And I started shopping for like the better part of a year. And I found a 
99 launch 996 holy shit ocean green uh, ocean jade metallic with a green leather interior and i think the guy i think he was gonna sell it to me for like 17 grand or something and at the time i look back now and i'm like i could have totally afforded 17 grand car like you know it's like it wouldn't it wouldn't have been wise but like i I, you know it wasn't that but it was like all of these decisions that i had made in my life in the midlife crisis that i was going through like just like hammered right into this one moment and like yeah i had to like go to a therapist and be sedated and like i mean i wasn't like punching people or anything but it was just like my whole brain just like stopped so i think someday once i feel like i really like move processed it and moved past it i mean this is three years ago now i like want to write that story of like how like the 9-11 became this like you know through no fault of its own this like object that represented like all the failure that i'd had in my life and then like how i was trying to figure out how to live the next part of my life and all this stuff yeah it's wow but also like do I want to write that story? It sounds like a real pain in the ass. So I would read it. I would I would fave the tweet. Of That's that all story. I want. Yeah, I don't even yeah. need you to read it. I just need uh, you yeah, to like, yeah. And, and maybe a tweet, a definite fave. Yeah, and if you could like just write something that's like, man, the honesty and truth of this like writing is so good. Like, and I'll, I'll <laughs> send you the feels. T- yeah, I'll send you the tweet to to. I'll, I'll prep yeah. some some materials for you for the campaign. But would it no, look I stupid? Actually, would it look stupid to wrap your nine nine one in ocean jade? Oh, first of all, nobody knows I have a 991. And second of all, I thought about it, but I'm not I'm not a big fan of non-generational colors. Like Yeah, I, I'm with you on that. Um, and I'm also not like really into raps. Like uh, But with paint to sample, anything could be generational. Well, sure. Could, it, conceivably, it's like, oh, this was actually one of one paint to sample. As a as Probably a, on that terrible tw- Instagram account. <laughs> I if I, I I've thought about it some. I don't know that I will keep this car forever, um, like for, forever enough to be worth painting it. For sure, yeah. Um, although I am already at a point where I'm like, I don't think I will ever buy another 911. Like I think like if I want a 911 in my life, I've got about as good as I need in it, you yeah. know. And it's like, yeah. Um, but uh, you know, my car's pretty, my wheels are good, but it's just a white. Like it looks like black interior you know it's like doesn't have a lot of zazz um and so i've definitely thought about painting before but um if i but to me it's like if i'm going to go through the trouble of painting and actually doing it right i would want to do like something wild and bright but i don't know that i really want that you know it's like for sure yeah and and painting a car is a tough pill to swallow that's that's a big yeah it's less of a big deal or scary to me because i'm not like i can take I can take the car apart at least, you know, I can do the prep. So it's sure. like, that, that takes some of the like expense. Yeah. You're pretty awesome. serious with like working on stuff, which is cool. I, I mean, I break a lot of stuff and just like <laughs> you know, get over it. But like, um, I will say if I, right now, if you, if somebody said, well, I'll pay for a paint job tomorrow, what do you want? Uh, Ruby stone, red metallic, like mm, just do that juicy, yeah. like yeah. pink and like just embrace that. I'm going to have like a pink, uh, 991, I think would be fun, but and then you wouldn't need a geo tracker full circle. <laughs> uh, I want to talk to you about, <clears throat> Oh, sorry. I want to talk to you about it at some point, but like one of the things that is, that is very interesting to me about like moving up a class in sports car that I've nicer than I've ever had before, but also something that like tons of people have opinions about is like, there's a bunch of interesting things that has happened to my brain about like, like realizing that, uh, like trying to make it look like a GT3 is very easily done, but like why? And like right. really trying to like appreciate the thing at the level that it is. It's like, it's a base yeah. model car. Like yeah. what is cool about the base model car and can I enhance as opposed to like, how can I make it look like fancier strikes, totally. deliveries? Totally. Like you've got a, what is your, you're a 930? Like, no, um, it's, it's a 911 SC G model. It's an SC. Okay. So, yeah. So it's like, you know, I feel like with the with the air cooled, you got a little bit more flexibility because they have become iconic in a way where it's like you can do you have the martini livery and it looks fantastic. Like I, I, no you. joke, it's like with the gold wheels, especially. It's just like I'm like, yep, he's got great taste. Like that's one of the best best ones I've ever seen. But it's also like it's very interesting on a 2014 car because it's like not 
new and hot and like it's got dings and dents and you know which is great for me um but it's like not old enough to like play with old liveries right. or colors and like right yeah, so. and you don't want to do it yeah like you said cross cross into like something where it's like aspirational like oh it has a 911 gt3 front bumper it's like why would you do that you know what i, I mean, mean it's like you don't want to look have like the, you're trying i already so have much. the mobile pegasus on the side which like if That's i had just seen, fun. if i had seen more of them i would i would be yeah like uh, but like and i have <clears throat> those wheels i have are like uh you know inspired by fuchs and so it's like those are cool yeah i've got that i've got those touches but i'm like uh if i went fully into making it look retro it doesn't suit what the car is at this period of time uh, right I, yeah I've, I've just found all of this stuff to be like a really interesting thing um which all goes out the window when i actually just go drive and then i'm like my thing yeah. makes noises fun it right. feels this way in my body and that's great uh, but like, yeah, when I'm stuck in stupid, uh, like, uh, up my ass as I normally am, uh, like, yeah, then I'd lose that. Uh, Sarah, where you're at, do you feel like I can only be gauche ironically? <laughs> I definitely used to always feel like that. Like if you saw the stupid clothes I wore 10 years ago, like it was always like, I was trying to get a little wink in there. Um, I, I don't I don't feel like I can really be gauche at all now. Like it's like I think as a middle aged white guy, there's a certain reserve that you need to apply to how you put yourself out to the world because you look lame and trying too hard and midlife crisisy if you go too hard and also like I don't need any more attention drawn to me. So like I don't know. Right. It's, that's a deep, that's a deep, there's a deep cut in there, Sarah, because it's like, should you just go quietly into the good night? Like, uh, <laughs> I don't know. But, but also like, yeah, like you can, uh, being flashy, I don't feel like is really my domain anymore. But yeah, we'll see. Then I occasionally I buy like really crazy clothes and I wear them out once and I'm like, I hate this and I feel deeply uncomfortable, but like I still try. Um, yeah. Anyway, I got to go. I'm wait Somebody else is waiting on me, but okay. Hey, thank you so much. This was Super fun. fun. Uh, I'll throw the stream up later. And Sarah, <laughs> am I dying? Look, I feel like I'm dying all the time. I'm always <laughs> in the process of memorializing my life, like in a, in a reboot every, you know, 30 seconds. So uh, yeah, we'll see. Anyway, I'll see you guys later. Bye. All right. Bye.